to do one. Um, but I'm really grateful for each one of you. Um, all the kind words, all the cards, the thoughtfulness that you've shown on my birthday, but also every day while we've been doing this. Um, it's just been really great to know you're there and know you're doing everything that you can. As Brother Taylor says, I've kind of made that my motto through this time. Do what you can with what you have to work with. And I believe that's what God expects of us. And I just want you to know I love and appreciate every one of you. Praise the Lord. You guys want to? <laughs> awesome. I have a great wife. Praise God. I want to, I want to tell a, uh, say a few thank yous to some other folks uh, before we get started. Uh, there's a group of uh, them that have been coming about 8 o'clock. They came at 8 o'clock this morning. Last week they came at 8 o'clock and worked and got everything set up. And um, I really appreciate their work. I, I mean, they, they put the Internet stuff all together, got it all figured out. And then the musicians coming and helping us as well and practicing and uh, everything. It's a blessing to have people in our church that are capable, and not only capable, but willing Amen. to do something. Go out of, as, as Rebecca said, you know, step out of your comfort zone, do something out of the ordinary. And I think if we're going we're, we're gonna to help other people in this time, and, and the time going forward, we're going to have to do things that are different. And you'll have to pray and ask the Lord what you have to do as a Christian to be able to be influential in the community that you live in. Uh, we live here in Neosho. Some of you live in other cities, in other towns. And you have to pray and ask God, what do I need to do as an individual to be effective in this hour that I live in? I believe Jesus is coming. And I believe he's coming soon. But he's asked us to occupy till he comes. He's, he wants us to be able to present the gospel in a clear manner in which people can understand the love of God, the power of God to transform their lives now immediately. Um, in the book of John, excuse me, in the book of Mark, it says uh, these three words, straightway, forthwith, and immediately. It's all one Greek word, and that word is talking about action. I mean, what are you going to do right now? And that's, that's my, my question to our church. What are we going to do to impact the world in which we live? I know, I know that God is helping you. I know that God is moving in your life. And he's taking care of you personally because you're a Christian. You're, you're a child of God. And he knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're doing. And he's helping you. Praise God. Is God helping you? Amen. I believe he is. I believe God's helping you. But now we've got to figure out how we're going to be able to share the gospel message with other people so that God can help them in turn. He's going to come back. And we want to take as many people, or we want, we want him to be able to have as many people in his kingdom and, and return with him. And we've got to share the gospel. Um, I, I asked uh, Brother Dathan to come and lead us in that song, God Bless America. I, I'm, not a, I'm, not a, uh, I'm not a political person. I'm not a, I'm not a social activist, but I'm a Christian. And in my, my, my behavior, what I do, who I am, what it, it, it has been, I've been given liberty in the country that I live in. Praise God. And I'm, I'm glad for our nation. But I want to tell you what, our nation is, is at a moment of time, if we're not careful, um, our civil liberties are going to be taken away. Our constitutional rights will be taken away. And I want you as a Christian, I want you to pray and ask God to help you to be the Christian that you need to be to be able to help the people that live in this country to, to continue to allow our country to be what God allowed it to be from the very foundation. So I asked him to come sing God Bless America. And I, I want you to sing it with us. And you sing it with all you got in your, in, in your car there. But I want to read a verse of scripture. Again, I'm not talking about political activism or, or social activism. I'm talking about me as an individual and you as individuals that comprise a community that love God and want to, want to do what God asks us to do. And I, I think the first thing that we've got to do is allow His Word to be the guide of our life. 
I mean, I'm, I'm not going to let uh, fear guide me. I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let my, my uh, social pressure guide me. I'm going to let the word of God guide my life. Say it with me. I'm going to let the word of God guide my life. I can't hear you. Say it with me. I'm going to let the word of God guide my life. What's going to guide your life, everybody? The word of God. And here it is, Psalms chapter 19. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. He, his going forth is from the end of heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of, of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. I want you to listen to this part here. The law of the Lord is perfect. Say it with me. The law of the Lord is perfect. I mean, the principles of his word, when it's talking about right there, is converting the soul. But it moves on past just the conversion of the soul. It's about directing your life. Once you are experiencing the power and the love of God that transform you, now you got to be led by him. The soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. Here, the next part. The statues of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. I'm glad that I have principles to live by that aren't my principles. They're God's principles. And they've been written in a manner that's clear. And that they're going to help you. And not only going to help you, it's going to help the community you live in. And it's going to help those that are outside of our community. And then it stretches all the way into other nations that we're influencing. Aren't you glad for his word? Bonk, 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 bonk. There you go. I'm glad for the word of God. It'll transform you, it'll guide you, and it'll strengthen you. But I'm glad I live in a nation that allows me at this moment to worship him and magnify him and present the power of God unto salvation to others that need to know him. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with foes. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Oh, God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad to live in America this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I know it's different circumstances. I think we say that about every time we get together. Amen. But I'm glad that God doesn't change. Amen. We, I hope you came to worship the Lord this morning. Amen. A couple new courses here thinking of them this morning on my heart when I woke up. Amen. They're really easy. Uh, just like to sing them this morning. Oh, Holy Spirit, 
we welcome you today fill us with your presence as we give you the praise lord we are your temple and for you alone we wait holy spirit come and take your place oh holy spirit we welcome you today fill us with your presence as we give you the praise lord we are your temple and for you alone we wait holy spirit come and take your place oh holy spirit we welcome you today fill us with your presence as we give you the praise lord we are your temple and for you alone we wait holy spirit come and take your place sing it one more time make it a prayer oh holy spirit we welcome you today fill us with your presence as we give you the praise lord we are your temple and for you alone we wait holy spirit come and take your place lord i worship you lord i worship you with my heart with my mind lord i worship you for your goodness and your mercy i humbly bow before your throne you are holy i worship you lord i worship you lord i worship you with my heart with my mind lord i worship you for your goodness and your mercy i humbly bow before your throne you are holy i worship you lord i worship you lord i worship you with my heart and with my mind lord i worship you for your goodness and your mercy i humbly bow before your throne you are holy i worship you oh lord i worship you lord i worship you with my heart with my mind lord i worship you for your goodness and your mercy i humbly bow before your throne you are holy i worship you you are holy i worship you you are holy i worship you hallelujah we worship you this morning lord hallelujah he is here hallelujah he is here His name again. He is here. Listen closely. Hear him calling out your name. He is here, and you can touch 
Him And you will never be the same Oh yes, He is here Hallelujah He is here Amen He is here Holy, holy I will bless His name again Oh, He is here just listen closely, hear him calling out your name. He is here and you can touch him. You will never sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for his presence? glad that we don't have to be in a building to feel the presence of God. Amen. But wherever we're at, amen, you probably don't have a song book. Amen. But if you have a, a holiness hymns that you keep in your car, amen, turn to page number 181. Amen. Let's sing a little bit of standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. I've had to do it during this time, haven't you? Amen. I've had to hold on to some promises of the Lord. Oh, standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, oh yes, I'm standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God I'm standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail But by the living word of God I shall prevail I'm standing on the promises of God Oh yes, I'm standing, standing Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm standing on the promises I now can see. Perfect present cleansing in the blood for me. I'm standing in the liberty where Christ makes free. I'm standing on the promises of God. Oh, yes, I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. I'm standing on the promises of God. Oh, yes, I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. We live in an uncertain time. We live in a time when emotions are up and down. People are going nuts. People are crazy. Some of them are just getting crazier because they were already crazy. Amen. But I'm thankful in an uncertain time that there's a certainty that I can hold on to. Amen. I want to sing that second verse a little bit slower. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt, coronavirus, or any other pestilence and fear assail. How many of you got your Bibles? But by the living Word of God, I shall prevail. Oh, I'm standing 
of the promises of God. Amen. I want to sing that verse again. Amen. If you got your Bible, just hold it out, out the window when we get to that part. Oh, standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. Oh, but by the living word of God, I shall prevail. Oh, cause I'm standing on the promises of God. Oh, yes, I'm standing. I'm standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing. I'm standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Oh, yes, I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Could we thank Him for His promises this morning? guides us you know I was I was standing there I was thinking the church has the responsibility of a moral compass in our nation you know we have the we have this need of our lives and individuals that make up the church to to live right to act right to to vote right to you know have moral influence in the nation in which we live but there's also, there's also men and women that make up the church that are involved in the, the lawmaking, the political system that we... And I, I want to tell you, everyone that's involved in that, I, I want to thank God for you. You know, you're, you're making a difference. You're helping us in the, the, the legal part of what we do. But it takes moral, not just legal, but it takes... I, and I, but I'm trying to say thank you for people that are involved in, in those, those parts of our nation building and then also socially i mean getting out i mean we we get out we pass out chicken that's social but i'm a christian i'm giving it because they the people need food you know and i want to be a blessing to their lives but there's there's people in our community that are helping with um ladies that are going there to give or to take the life of a child an abortion and we have men and women that are there that are saying there's other alternatives. And the reason they're there and they're saying other alternatives, you can, you can give up a child for adoption. You, know, you can keep the child yourself and we'll help you. But they do that because there's, there's moral character. But they're out there in the social environment trying to help people make good decisions. And I want to say we appreciate however you as a Christian influence your community you need to you got to figure out what is your place in our world today because i'm a christian and i have a responsibility to share the gospel and to be an influence in my nation to keep the freedom that i have to do what god wants me to do i appreciate y'all appreciate god's goodness and his mercy but i i most of all i want to be led by his word, directed by his spirit, so that I can accomplish the things that are pleasing to him. If you do things that are pleasing to him, you're going to help your community, you're going to help your society, you're going to help your nation, you're going to help other nations, because he is the guide of your life. Praise God. Go ahead, Brother Josh. <laughs> We often sing a verse of song that says, "'Tis grace that's brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home." And I'm thankful I'm a testimony of God's grace. I know that truthfully, in so many ways, if it wasn't for His, His mercy in my life, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be where I am. If you think about where God's brought you in your life, through the sunshine or the rain, 
He's still sovereign in our lives. And I can testify that I'm thankful that he's kept me alive and kept me safe thus far. Worship the Lord with me. I almost let go. I felt like I just couldn't take a life anymore. My problems had me bound. Depression weighed me down. But God held me close so I wouldn't let go. His mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. I almost let go. I felt like I just couldn't take life anymore. My problems had me bound, depression weighed me down, but God held me close so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. And I'm here today because God kept me. I'm a Day only because of His grace, God kept me. He kept me. God's mercy kept me, so I wouldn't let go. Oh yes, I'm here today because God kept me. Oh, and I'm a Because of His grace, my God kept me, He kept me, His mercy kept me, so I wouldn't let go. right at the edge of a breakthrough I couldn't see oh the devil really had me but Jesus came and grabbed me and he held me close so I wouldn't let go his mercy kept me yes it did so I wouldn't let go oh and now I'm here today because God kept me oh and I'm alive today only because of his grace God kept me he kept me hallelujah his mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go oh yes I'm here today because God kept me I'm alive today only because of His grace. God kept me so I wouldn't let go. His mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. Oh, God kept me. He kept me. Aren't you thankful? God's mercy's kept us. And I'll keep you. So I wouldn't let go. Praise the Lord, the weather uh, is a little better than I was anticipating from what they was predicting. I hope everybody's doing as well as you can under the circumstances. I would like to encourage you, though, that um, 
this won't last forever. One of these days we'll look back, just like the Bible says, we'll look back over all the way the Lord our God brought us to prove us to see whether we'd serve him or not. And this will be one of them times. I'd like for you, if you would, to turn to Matthew chapter 24. I remember Brother Stoner, he had a song, a song, something about uh, Matthew 24. But it's one of them passages of Scripture deals with end times. So I'm going to start reading. I'm not going to read a whole lot of it. It's rather a long chapter. I'm just going to read a few verses beginning with verse 45. It says, and it raises a question. Jesus is talking here. He says, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give, him, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if, that evil servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's uh, <clears throat> something that the young people around here do. Uh, at least I heard them. They ha they'll, they'll say something to the effect, attitude check. Well, these two servants there in the story that Jesus told they had an attitude. One of them had a good attitude, and the other one had a bad attitude. And Jesus describes one of the servants as faithful and wise, and then he describes the other servant as simply being evil. That don't sound good. I mean, that means that in the Lord's eyes, it's evil to be unfaithful and act spiritually stupid you know you got faithful and wise and you got unfaithful and stupid sorry mom um, what was I was supposed to say uh, smartless okay so uh, we had a, a faithful and we have the other but the faithful and the wise servant had been told what to do while they waited on their master's return. Knowing when all this pandemic stuff kind of reminds me of the fact that, you know, yeah, the Lord could come just any time. But the evil servant had been told the same thing. But the evil servant had a certain kind of attitude that caused him to do the opposite of what he should have done. I mean, he seriously needed to do the attitude check. And uh, we need to check this out, okay? So we're going to talk about this for a few minutes here. We don't want to lose our focus and get a bad attitude. Not now. Now, I want you to look here. you got your Bible out there in your car with you, I hope. Look at, look at the first thing that, that the evil servant did. It said in verse 48, but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, the Lord delayeth his coming. Now, he may, he may not have been dumb enough to say it out loud, but that verse said that he thought it. And as far as, as a, you know, a person thinks, the Bible says, as they think in their heart, that's the way they are. So what you're thinking at this moment really reveals what you are. And the question is, are you thinking about your soul? Because if you're not, you better be. I mean, we're living in times where you really need to be concerned about the condition of your soul and the soul of your family. Look at, look at what the evil servant uh, did next. Verse 49 says, And shall 
began to smite his fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunken. Now that's, that's a shocker, isn't it? I mean, here's a guy that knows the Lord is coming, but because he, he hasn't come yet, this guy loses his edge. He no longer lives in constant anticipation of the Lord's return, so he delves into behavior that totally contradicts what he knows the Lord wants him to do. Y'all out there need to be careful. I mean, we're living in times. That's why it's so good to see so many of you here at church, is, even though it's kind of a different way of doing it, is because you need to maintain your spiritual condition. He begins to attack his fellow servants, which, you know, basically means he, he, he begins to criticize folks that he went to church with. He was critical and uh, mean-spirited, and he just got nasty. You don't want that to happen to you now, do you? And to top it off, he starts to fellowship with irreverent people, lost people, backslid people. And in case I'm describing someone that's listening to me, backsliding always starts, just in case you didn't know, it always starts with small compromises. See, remember this rule. The chains of sin are too light to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. You might want to remember that because the devil will sure try to put it on you if you ain't careful. Now, if you, if you are a backslider or are in the process of backsliding, and I hope that ain't the case with anybody here, but if you are, you need to take a look at what verse 50 and 51 said. First, now, now, listen, this workable definition of a backslider is someone that used to be. You ever run into somebody and say, I used to be a Christian. I used to go to church. I used. That's, that's the definition of a backslider. He said in verse 50, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. And in an hour there he, that he is not aware of. So look, 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 look. You got your Bible. Look. The first thing verse 50 says is the Lord of that servant shall come. Now you might as well write it down. The Lord's going to come. I don't know when, but he's going to come. I can't tell you when it's going to happen, but I assure you it's going to happen. Now, then the second thing it says, it's going to be a tragedy for anyone that's, that's not serving the Lord, that's backslid or lost when that happens. Now, notice what verse 50 says. It'll, it'll affect those that are not ready when the Lord comes. One, they won't be looking for it or expecting it, and they won't know it's happened until... It was too late to prepare for it. Now, you don't want to miss the coming of the Lord. There are going to be people who won't know the rapture has happened until they go to church and part of the church is gone. So we need to be, we need to be constantly aware of our spiritual surroundings. And the third thing is stated in verse 51, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, in such a, such a sad statement as that, I mean, I, I don't even like reading it, even to myself. But it says that even if a person claims to be religious, yet they are committing sins that they know they shouldn't be doing, even if nobody else knows about it, when the trumpet sounds, God will cut them asunder. That means he will take them out of the crowd that they were supposed to have been a part of. Are y'all listening to me? Hmm? I mean, put, and he's going to put them in a category that, that they belong in. And that category is defined as hypocrites. That means which are people who pretend to have something spiritual when they really don't. And when they realize that they've been recognized for what they are and will face the consequences, they'll weep and agonize over their eternal condition. Now, I'm just, I'm just telling you, folks, you don't want to end up like that. Nobody in their right mind wants to miss the boat when it comes time to go to heaven. You're used to saying that old song, the old ship of Zion. Well, you don't want to miss it. One of the most important points of that parable is that Jesus warns us that it is eternally dangerous to be, to be sinning 
while you're pretending to be righteous. I want you to think about that. So during the disruption of our life caused by this pandemic, it's essential that we stay spiritually focused. Really. I mean, instead of pretense, we need persistence. Pandemic persistence. Now, pandemic persistence, persistence means to continue firmly in a course of action in spite of difficulty and opposition. Hmm. Synonyms for persistence are persevering, determined, single-minded, unwavering. I have a few important questions I want to ask you about your spiritual persistence during this pandemic. You ready? Here's question number one. Are you a faithful and wise servant? No, that's what it said there, verse 24. I mean, uh, chapter 24, verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Now, Jesus asked that. And, and, and that's a powerful question. Uh, where then, or who then is a faithful and wise servant? Who then is faithful and trustworthy? Wise means they're sensible servant. The, the Lord qualifies the importance of a servant having those two qualities. I mean, he tells us this is essential if you want to be ready at all times. When the Lord hath made rule, who, who, whom the Lord hath made rule over, ruler over his household to give, them, to give them meat in due season. That just simply means the Lord is looking for someone that he can trust to be in charge of special duties which are necessary for the well-being of the household. We are part of that household, right? The household of faith. And Jesus is actually uh, taken in spiritual terms or talking in spiritual terms and is referring to the church, his kingdom, the, the servants he has chosen, and that's us. So he's putting a question to us, or I, I'm going to put it to you. Are you a faithful and wise servant? I want you to think about it. I, I mean... You know, every one of us needs to personalize that question. Or, or, or even more pointed, are you a faithful and wise servant of the Lord right now? Because you need to be that now. Faithfulness to our faith and spiritual sense, uh, to know how to apply it in these pandemic times, that's going to be essential to us getting safely through these current difficulties. I've never seen it like this. I'm an old man. I've never seen it like this. But here it is. And our lives has been disrupted by, the, by these necessary precautions put in place by the, by, by the fact we have this coronavirus to deal with. But it's essential that we not put our Christian principles on the shelf and act out, our, out of desperation rather than Christian beliefs. I mean, we must be faithful to the Lord's principles and wise as to our health priorities. But we're going to have to do it at the same time. The question is, will you be found faithful? Now, I'll tell you what I appreciate. I want you to know, every, every person that's here, this is, this is a blessing to my soul, not just because you know, I want to see how many folks it takes to make a crowd, but simply because it's important that that people be here. Will you be found faithful? Blessed, it says, is the servant that whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Hmm? I mean, if the Lord was to come right now, I guarantee you, you would be glad that you were sitting here in the parking lot in your car having church. You'd be a whole lot happier than if you sat sitting somewhere else where you wasn't supposed to be. Blessed, which means something more than just happy. I mean, it, it, it is, is how a Christian will feel when the Lord comes and finds them doing what he told them to do. Now, people who don't care about what God thinks, they have little or no appreciation for faithfulness, but the only thing, uh, they only think in terms of success, you know. Their spirit goes up and down with the, with the number of people in attendance on a certain Sunday. But the true Christian values goes far beyond simply showing up at church or a church event. Christian faithfulness comes out of a heart, not our head. 
Huh? It comes out of your heart, not your head. A lot of people, you know, all the religion, Brother Branham used to say that, you know, their, their religion was from their neck up. All they had was what in their head. I like what Spurgeon said one time when, when somebody asked him about holy water. He said, holy water, if there is such a thing, it runs out of eyes of gratitude, trickles, trickles down cheeks of repentance, and falls on the pages of the Word of God. John the Apostle was the only apostle that wasn't afraid to stand by the cross. You go back and read it. The rest of them forsook him and fled. And because John was there, you know what Jesus did? He gave him something special to do. I'm glad you're here. God's got things for you to do. He told him, take care of mom. You remember that? You know, Mary was there. And, and uh, he said, uh, son, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. And from that moment, John took Jesus' mother into his own house. And, and, and we often think, you know, a person isn't doing anything for the Lord unless they're a preacher or a teacher or a missionary. Well, if that's the case, why well, have that part of it in the Bible about John standing by the cross? No, from the cross, our Lord gave his one truly faithful disciple the job that he needed done at that moment. And John did it, and he did it faithfully. I don't know what, what God's got for you to do right now at the moment, but how about you? Will you faithfully execute the duty Jesus assigns you in our limited opportunity that we have during a pandemic? Now, I, I, I know that he later wrote five books in the Bible. John did. John was such a powerful preacher of the gospel that the Romans exiled him to the Isle of Patmos. But even in exile, John was used by God to write the Revelation. And after all the other apostles were gone, John was the only person left that could say, my eye has seen. These hands have handled the word of life. Why? Because he was faithful. And we have a 27th book in the New Testament because God found a man exiled on an island that was faithful. And the question is, are we going to be faithful during this? Look, the Lord is looking for faithful people to do what needs to be done in a time of need. And we're in it. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Now, any Christian can qualify to be used by the Lord during pandemic times. The basic requirement of usefulness, do you know what it is? Faithfulness. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found so for your information, the Lord has all the, he has all the wine bags and all the critics that he can use right now. He's got all the people that are naysaying and talking about, you know, how bad everything is. I mean, people like Sam Ballot and Tobiah in, in Nehemiah's time that only know how to make critical comments aren't very useful in times like this. They're like the folks Jesus said would be around in the last days. They'll kill you and think they did God a service. But you don't want to be in that bunch, now do you? The Lord's looking for faithful people that will be persistent during this pandemic. Really? I've never, I'm, I'm an old dude and I never saw it long on this wise, but I'm seeing it now. And one thing I'm seeing for sure is that there's ever been a time when there needs to be Christians that will rise to the occasion and do what they can. It's now. So what the Lord is looking for in these troubled times are people that will be a positive spiritual blessing. Within the limits, now I want to emphasize this in case anybody here works for, the, works for the county or works for the state or anything else, anybody looking at it, uh, on the live stream, I want to emphasize the fact that they need to do it within the limitations set by them that rule over us, just like Hebrews 13, 17 tells us, obey them that have the rule over you. We need to do it within those limitations, but we need to do all of it we can. Maintaining our spiritual life is something that we can't put on hold until the corona 
uh, pandemic is over. I mean, Jesus told the, the devil, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that means that we need uh, what we can get at church just like we need what we can get at Walmart. If you don't live by bread alone, and you're not, you live by what proceeds out of mouth. That means you need to go to church. You need to be as faithful to do that as you do to try to get Walmart to get some. Now, listen, actually, we need what we get in here at church more than anything we can get at Walmart. And we need to remember that. So let's focus on staying as active as we can as a church. Again, I appreciate Brother Miles and all the people, Sister Miles and everybody work hard to try to make these kind of things possible because we need to be as active as we can as a church. We can't get together at church, but we can get together over the live stream. That's awesome. We can't visit after church and go out and eat together, but we can call one another and text one another. We, we, we can pray for each other. We can share urgent prayer requests with each other. My point is we need to be as spiritually active as we can under the circumstances. It's called pandemic persistence. Now, what I'm asking you is I'm asking for everybody to try to look for something they can do that would benefit their brothers and sisters in the Lord and the church in general within the limitations that are set on us. I don't want nobody to break no laws. I don't want you to do uh, insane, stupid stuff. But anything that can be done, effectively done, let's do it. I want us to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to help us. Lord, we've heard a lot about what we shouldn't do during this coronavirus pandemic. But what we really need, Lord, is for you to help us to know what we should do. I want you to show us what we can do and still comply with the restrictions. We want to obey them that have the rule over us. But at the same time, we want to continue to do your work as much as we can. I want you to help us to be hopeful. Help us to be confident. Remind us, Lord, that you have never failed us yet. Give us all. I want to. I mean, everybody here and everybody listening, give them a want to because we could do some really meaningful things for you, even great things amidst these restrictions if we want to. And please protect our families. I ask you to especially protect the children and anyone that's currently sick I ask you to give them a complete recovery and comfort those around the world that are mourning because they've already lost someone they love during this time. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we worship the Lord? Brother... Kenny and him are going to sing, and we're just going to take a little time to worship the Lord. And I want you to know that um, I am confident that what we're doing now won't have to be done always. There's, the Lord's going to help us, and we're going to get back to a new normal. And what I mean by that is I'm hoping that the new normal will cause us to be more appreciative of our opportunities to worship and our responsibility with the spread of the gospel than we've ever been in our life. It'd be terrible if we went through all this and had nothing to show for. 
but if God would use it to light a fire in our soul that would make us more determined to be good stewards and have that pandemic persistence all the time then we could say the devil meant it for evil but God has worked it for good why don't you just worship the Lord Appreciate the Lord. 
appreciate our church and the people that make up our church. And uh, we're praying for you. Believe in God to help you make a difference in the world in which we live in. Praise God. We're going to do this again next week. And uh, plans to be here again. Brother Sminky, they asked if you could teach Sunday school. And he's waving. He said he could do it. So we're going to try for 1030 to have about 20 minutes of Sunday school. It's not going to be as long as we normally do it, but we're going to have Sunday school 1030 here if you'd like to come and uh, get lined up here. And we'll do that. And then we'll have some singing in the beginning, kind of like what we've been doing the last two weeks. If you got any suggestions, you uh, you text them to myself or my wife or Brother Taylor. We'll try to do our best to make make this the best possible. Praise God! Opportunity for you to feel and experience the presence of God. And what we're going to do is we're going to, if everybody can kind of be patient with us, what we're going to do is we're going to. Um, Let the back row go out, and you're going to go out that way, okay? And then the front row, you're going to go out. We need our park parking ushers to help us. Give us a second here to get some parking guys. Because we want to be careful. We're going to let you go out the front row out that way. And then tonight on um, live stream, Brother Pennington is going to be preaching. He's going to be sharing about by Guatemala and what the Lord's doing there. And so we'd like y'all to turn in, turn in, tune in to that and uh, share and um, like our page, you know, and share it with other people so they can get some of that information. You know, I, I'm glad our church is here, but if, if you're listening out there on the live stream, We'd love to have you join us and get some help from the Lord and be in the presence of God. It'd be a grand opportunity to give your heart and life to Jesus in this hour. Today is a day of salvation. And so all those that need Jesus, today would be a great day to turn your heart and life to Him. And so... They got an usher on this side. They got an usher on that side. Just take your time going out. If we can have some parking guys, one guy down here. And, okay, why don't we get on this end? You can back. You can start up, and you'll back out, and you go that way.